Israël en sa se deuxième channel ou en jodi à nous wal parler de loi met kafu. Now there's different names for met kafu. There's kafu which is like the French version, which I'm sure I didn't even say that right, but whatever. There's Kalfu with the L. There's Kafu with a C or a K. Many different ways, but all the same person. This video is kind of going to be the start of me getting into the dark side of Haitian voodoo. I'm still going to do a lot more of the lighter side and the brighter side of Haitian voodoo, but I wanted to get into the dark side because I kind of stumbled across and I was like, ooh, why not make a video? Now, just to let you guys know, as always, do not just respect anyone's religion down below whatsoever and while watching this video and any other video I make on this topic please keep in mind that Haitian voodoo itself is not a bad religion keep in mind that Haitian voodoo is a religion like any other religion it is not black magic black magic and voodoo are not the same thing. However, people do use black magic in conjunction with voodoo beliefs and voodoo deities in order to do harm onto people. Also understand, and I have to tell you this guys right now, anyone who practices black magic in conjunction with Haitian voodoo or any voodoo religion will most likely be punished eventually. Okay, if they don't get punished immediately, they usually get punished eventually. This is because one, that's not what the religion is for. Two, because you should not be doing harm to other people. And when you do the voodoo religion in particular, you should have a pure or try to maintain some sort of like a pure heart because things will flip back onto you. And three, these lois that are in that sector of Haitian voodoo are typically the law that love to make deals now these deals are usually sell your soul sell your kids sell your wife sell your neighbor type of deals to the point where if you fuck up you fucking up a lot of shit i'm talking about your whole lineage I've, i have friends that literally claim they are cursed because their great great grandfather fucked up and made a promise with the loi and didn't keep it and now the loi like owns the family's fucking souls or some shit like that like i'm telling you it's really really serious do not dibble and dabble in black magic and haitian voodoo or any other type of beliefs to do harm onto other people because i guarantee you it will not end well and you might just die i'm not joking you might just die or put everyone around you at a risk of being seriously maimed injured or hurt so i genuinely suggest just don't just don't and that brings us to this video and met kafu now met kafu is actually papa legba's twin brother in french and haitian creole kafu means crossroads you know the the crossroads <laughs> and of course the crossroad references is graveyard spirits the dead now i had to do so much asking around for this but i'm gonna tell you this right now i didn't get too much information and that's because a lot of people are terrified of him like very very terrified and with reason so essentially he is the gatekeeper just like papa legba except he lets all the evil spirits in and out he is the one that approves or denies any spells that are sent after people and he is also someone that is only summoned by a mumbo which is a female voodoo priestess or ogon which is a male voodoo priestess no one else can summon him and if somehow you try to summon him or you try to like bother him with some frivolous shit trust me it will be hell to pay because when he is summoned he is literally there to most likely wreak some sort of punishment onto someone else on behalf of the Oga or the mumbo and when this is done no one can speak in his presence okay if you speak in his presence there will be hell to pay he will curse you okay this is a very very commandable law he is very very highly respected and most importantly feared with reason because like he's literally in charge of spells and all types of shit and he grants you misfortune if you disrespect him in any way shape or form however there's a lot of people on the other spectrum that see him as just doing his job literally the world cannot be the world without good and evil and someone has to do the job of i guess doing the evil and what's very very interesting 
is I've been listening to a song I believe about Metcalfu for forever. Can someone please confirm this? Because like now that I did my research and I listened to that song like a lot, I love this song so much. Like I listen to the song all the time. Bro, that song is fire. Y'all can listen to it. I'll probably link it down below. It's a really good song. Okay, so I just realized listening to the words a little bit closely as I'm editing this video that literally this is going to come in reference in during the rest of the video. But basically they're saying if you're a liar, if you're a bad person, which means you're going to have problems in Kafu Dangere, which means in front or in the presence of Met Kafu. Wow ridiculous. But like I said, clarify down below if I'm making the right references because oh shit, like that's basically what they're saying in terms of problem. like you're going to be in problems if you're not a good person. But I need to understand if that's like the legitimate law that they're referencing. In case I forget to link it down below, he is literally the opposite of Papa Legba. If you haven't watched my Papa Legba video, it will be carded up above or linked down below. There's two ways to go about this. So a lot of people don't know much about him because there's not many people that essentially follow him in a sense. Most Lua have a following, right? They have people that serve them. I never heard of anyone serving Met Kafu. I don't know if this is because of the type of Lua he is or if it's because of the job he has. So comment down below anyone who practices because I'd like to have more clarification because people are so terrified to even talk about him. Papa Legba is essentially the gatekeeper. He sits at the crossroads and he lets all the spirits in. You know, you're supposed to call him before any voodoo ceremony. You know, the whole shebang. He's literally like the grandfather, the father fathers of all the Lua. Okay, he is literally one of the governing officers of the voodoo religion, especially the Haitian voodoo religion. He is sweet, he is kind, he's a lot older, he's wiser. He literally just be chilling at the crossroads, you know, letting people into heaven or wherever it is they need to go. Like he's very laid back. He's also a Lua that really commands respect, but in a very subtle way. He's not really mean or grumpy or all of that extra shit. That's why when that white girl had died and she was trying to summon a Haitian voodoo Lua, which again, I made a video about, credit up above her down below, people were essentially like, oh, she tried to summon Papa Legba. And a lot of people were like, what the fuck, Papa Legba? Um, and this is because in terms of a modern day fucking theatrics, I can't stand media sometimes. They kind of confuse Baal Samdi with Papa a leg right so essentially Baal Samdi is not bad either but essentially he has more of a bad reputation Baal Samdi is the trickster he's vulgar he's always cursing like ugh. but it's two completely different Lua Baal Samdi is part of the petrol Lua meanwhile Papa Legba is part of the Radha Lua and Metcalfu is also a petrol Lua so there's key differences there's Gidid there's petrol and then there's Radha I believe I've talked about this before there's no dedicated video maybe one day I should do a dedicated video but essentially the petrol Lua are more eccentric they're loud they're more vulgar and not vulgar in a way of fuck you bitch I can't stand you get the fuck out of here why the fuck you calling me more in a hey bitch let's party let's shake some ass they're that type of vulgar you know they're not like genuinely disrespectful but they're like a lot they're a lot much okay they're usually the Lua that people are drawn to if they're younger or if they just have like more of a boisterous personality the Radha Lua are usually older a lot more ancient and typically they come from Africa these are the Lua that have been adopted from most of the African voodoo religions and adopted into Asian religions then you have the Gede which are kind of like the babies the 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 sub that I don't know how to explain it, but like literally they're kind of governed by Baal Samdi. Um, I believe Papa Legba has some type of hierarchy there as well. Momo Brigi. Those are like their kids and all the Gede Lua have Gede in their name. You know, there's Gede Nibo, there's Papa Gede. There's like, it's just, it's so much going on there. Like honestly, the Gede could probably have their own series. There's a lot going on with the Gede. And then you have Cousins. Like there's so, listen, 
I only talk about the main three because that's the ones I remember and that I know the most about. But trust me, there's so much that goes into it. There are a lot of people out there that will tell you straight up, like, you know, he's not a bad person. He's not a bad guy, but he has a job to do just like anyone else. There's a lot of people on earth that do horrible jobs, you know, and we may deem them as demonic or horrible or have bad spirits. But essentially, the job is the job. And a lot of people see him that way. He is often depicted as tall, handsome, muscular, which is the complete opposite of Papa Legba, which is really, really old, really, really wise. So very, very interesting contrast there. Comment down below again if you practice because I want more clarification on this. I assumed that this was going to be more like a Baon Samdi type of situation where, you know how Baon Samdi, there's Baon Cimetier, there's Baon Criminel. I thought it was going to be more of those things where it's like there's different like versions but they're not different people but they could be different people but in this essence he's literally the opposite and he does exist it's two different people that do two completely different jobs i feel like with all the balance it's like same job but like different little like aspects but these are two completely different jobs he is very authoritative and the grand master of all sorcery he actually denies being involved with any demons or any evil spirits or doing any harm of any kind hello y'all editing me here i forgot to add this so med Fool is actually the essence of all magic okay he can also offer you protection because without him and without his approval no spells actually get through he's a very good guard what haitians would call a god he is also a very lucky loi he is the good luck loi you know what this reminds me of remember fairly odd parents when cosmo had that evil twin this is exactly what this reminds me of because it's like are you evil or are you not evil like clearly you're evil but are you evil is that perception and it really makes me think it's especially like the way we are as humans is something evil because we think it's evil or is something actually truly evil um is the devil really the devil is the devil actually a bad person is he demonic and wants you to burn in hell for the rest of your life does he want to steal your soul does he not like there's a lot that goes into that okay so let me know your thoughts and opinions down below be mindful if you ever somehow come in the presence of metkafu he does have the ability of like mind control in his presence so yeah lots going on there good luck with that if somehow that happens to you because don't nobody get time for that all of his ceremonies also only take place in the middle of the night at crossroads his symbol is the moon his colors are black and red and one of his offerings include a bull. He is a hot spirit and more than likely most of the time he only accepts blood from his sacrifices as something that he um, takes as an offering. But other offerings do include sweets and rum. I believe Kima is something that he really likes which is like a white Haitian rum with some star anise in it. He'll take offerings such as apples, cake, but anything you feed him must be red and or black and they must be given to him in even numbers they have to be in a number two a number four a number eight never three never five never seven even numbers only now these offerings are often given to him to cool him down after any type of service or ceremony that is done now understand that metkafu in a lot of these more i guess negative or evil laws they like to call them are crossroad type of law they're not only responsible for a lot of you know spells and like things like that they are also the law that you only invoke or speak to when you're literally at a crossroads like literally when you have to make a very serious or drastic decision you don't bother them with anything trivial you don't just call on them for fucking fun you don't just have them around just to have them around they're very very powerful and they're the type of law that can fuck you up if you don't do shit the right way they are literally only to be invoked for guidance or punishments like that's that's literally about it. Also keep in mind with all of the other crossroad Lua and Metkafu that these Lua love to trick people. They love to joke around. They're very like, you don't know what you get. They're not what you see is what you get. Like they're not the definition of that. Like if you have poor intentions, more than likely, 
they'll steer you in the wrong direction. And if you have good intentions, maybe they'll steer you in the right direction. Even though these Lua are here to serve the purpose of literally guiding evil to evil and where it needs to go. And a lot of you are probably like, what the fuck? How could this be positive in any type of way? Essentially, like I said before, these Lua do have a job to do. I ain't messing with it though, because don't nobody got time. But if you think about it on the sense of someone got to do it, it makes perfect sense, I guess. Just like there's other religions or other types of, you know, situations where people do pray for certain guidance and sometimes that guidance does have to do with punishments curses or just you know wishing bad on people which a lot of people do now although he has this reputation of being like ridiculously evil and people think that he's demonic he like all Lua, okay, no matter whether you think they're good or evil, have the whole thing of morale. They all carry the morality of Guinan, which means he has morals and actually cares about what people do in terms of them being a good or a bad person. However, he can't control what other people do and essentially he has a job to do. Now, although many consider him as Papa Legba's twin and essentially the Petro manifestation of Legba, a lot of people see it the other way as him being like the split as to when good becomes evil or when evil becomes bad. He is also responsible for possession. If you guys are not aware in the Haitian voodoo religion, most of the time when you are speaking or communicating with Lua, it's not like a freaking ghost that appears. Usually the Lua actually comes into someone and comes to communicate with those that are at the ceremony or those who practice the Haitian voodoo religion in general. It's typically not like a thing where it's like, oh my God, I see Papa Legba and he was standing right in front. It's typically not like that. Most of the time to communicate with a Lua has to be during a ceremony. And in this case, Metcalfu actually makes all of this possible in terms of being in charge of the peristal. And this is very, very important because without the peristal, realistically, no one would be able to communicate with any of the Lua. A lot of Haitian voodoo and communicating with the deities and the Lua have a lot to do with possession. Powers of good and evil balance the world, okay? You can't have good without evil. And whether you think Metcalfu or any of their other cross rule type of Lua are evil or not is your personal opinion and I'd love to hear it down below. But respectfully, of course, because don't nobody got time, okay? Please don't be ignorant. Please don't be disrespectful because you will get blocked. Nobody got time for that. Like I said, if you are someone who practices, comment down below. If you practice another form of voodoo, I'd love to know what the differences and similarities are. Also understand, I can't give up too much information, okay? Because um, this is Haitian culture at the end of the day. We got to keep it pure somehow. Can't give everybody all the information. I know a lot of y'all be complaining and y'all wish the videos were longer, but here's why. Seek your own research, go to a legitimate Haitian person or a person that legitimately studies Haitian voodoo or someone who legitimately practices Haitian voodoo because they're the only ones that can give you the legitimate answer. Please make sure you guys leave your thoughts and opinions down below. With that being said, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. It's you all that and I'm gonna see y'all next time.